Hello amigos and welcome to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Warriors Pride Boxing Academy here in Miami, Florida. How are my good buddies doing? How's everybody doing back home? Anyway guys, uh, I'm taking a little walk today. You know, like they say, one day at a time in order to start getting back into the shape that I used to be, you know, I'm maybe at 30% right now. Still got some pains in the body after my major surgery, uh, kidney removal. As I had mentioned before, the pathology came back positive. It was cancer. Uh, it was a tumor, tumorous cancer in my left kidney that's been removed. It's been a process. I got sick last week. I got the flu. It's like, damn. Two steps forward, two steps back. But I'm back on the saddle again, trying to uh, to regain, regain a little bit of strength. So I'm walking this morning, I'm, I'm walking at least half a mile every day here in Miami in order to, <sighs> can't be laying around the house, guys. You know, it's crazy. But anyway, today we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the, the, the latest news on boxing, some of the latest things that have come up. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Mr. Subriel Matias, El Orgullo de Maternillo. We're going to talk a little bit about him, all right? We're going to start with him. And some of the news, the reason why I had not done any more episodes for over a week was because it, it was uh, specifically talking about Subriel Matias. And we're going to talk about other, other subjects this morning. But um, what I wanted to say is that he, um, it looks like he was going to fight. Um, there was a chance he might be fighting uh, Michel Rivera. Then in, 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 in it appeared that he was going to fight Elvis Rodriguez. And then Liam Paros um, came back into the picture. So now it seems like it's almost confirmed that it's going to be against Liam Paro in Puerto Rico in June 19th or something or, around that. That uh, can't remember exact the, the exact date, guys. It's uh, it's in the month of June, mid June. All right. So apparently, uh, I'm assuming they they offered Liam Paro what he wanted because um, Surya was running out of options. You got some of these guys. Um, calling out Sobriel and telling him uh, all kinds of, you know, using all kind of demeaning language against him, but they won't face him. And that's funny. You know, nowadays that's that's the that's how 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 champions or contenders act today. It's all media it's all in the media calling each other out you know and then uh if the opportunity comes available for them to fight somebody like Subriel Matias they uh they back down and they start giving excuses and um like I mentioned so many times before back in the day when you had someone calling someone out you know, the fight would be, be made. Everybody would fight everybody. You know, you fight the best in order to be the best. So that philosophy is now completely different. Nowadays, it's all about, you know, who's more popular and uh, social media, who's the guy that has more followers, more friends, Facebook friends. That's some stupid crap. Facebook friends. You gotta be kidding me. You know, some of these people don't even know what a friend is. They don't even know how to socialize. But anyway, that's another subject for another day, guys. You know, but today, uh, it seems that uh, Subir Matias and Liam Paro are going to be facing each other in Puerto Rico. And uh, I want you to apologize. I want to apologize to you guys if you hear any background noise because I'm walking through my neighborhood and everybody's doing some shit here. 
you know, they're either cleaning their car, taking their dogs for a walk, you know, and or working on projects from their garage, you know. But uh, yeah, it's a nice, beautiful day, by the way. So going back to the subject of Sobrir Matias, all right, how do you guys see Sobrir Matias faring against Liam Paro? And I know we had spoken about this matchup in the past, like four, four episodes ago, three, four episodes ago. I really see uh, a, a beat down from Matias' side. I know Liam Paro is a tough Australian fighter. Australian fighters are hardcore. They're tough, but uh, I mean, this guy is tailor-made for Matias. Now, this fight happens in Puerto Rico in June, and my health is, and God permits me to have my health restored, you know, I will be there. And I look forward to seeing some of you guys um, present and sharing our medalla with you guys, shaking your hand and uh, enjoying one hell of an event in Puerto Rico, all right? But I believe that once uh, Matias dispatches um, Liam Paro, I mean, I don't know how, how easy things are going to get. But uh, I'm pretty sure that one big fight is going to come after that one. It's either going to be Teofimo Lopez, who will be, I don't know, is he Teofimo Lopez have anything right now set up? I don't think he does. Uh, it will either be Teofimo Lopez or Devin Haney or even uh, the winner between Rolly Romero and Isaac Cruz. And I believe that one would be a good one. That would be another title for uh, Suriel Matias. I don't know if uh, Rolly would take that fight if he wins, but I'm pretty sure Rolly Romero would take it. You know, Rolly Romero is a tough Mexican style fighter who um, who is also tailor-made for Suriel, man. That, that fight, I don't think that fight will last but I would love to see something like that. So it would be definitely, we're talking about, you know, um, the potential of the next fights for Suriel Matia being good ones, good opportunities. It would be either Haney, <coughs> who, who I believe is gonna just destroy uh, the social media champion uh, Ryan Garcia or you know the winner between Rolly Romero and Isaac Cruz and I'm leaning towards Isaac Cruz I think Isaac Cruz is going to beat the hell out of Rolly Romero Rolly Romero is, is a hype job but anyway guys tell me what you guys think uh, moving forward do you guys think that um, these fights are viable for Suriel Matias or is there anybody else that you think could be facing the Puerto Rican champ? Now, I'm going to rant a little bit and talk to you guys a little bit about some of the things I've been, I've been listening to. Some uh, comments from my last episode when I was talking about the Joshua fight versus an MMA, you know, former champion. And how uh, people let let's put it this way, all right? Let me let me let me uh, let me put it this way, all right? In my opinion, there are several kinds of fanatics or fans. You got the fans, and you got the fanatics. The fans are people. Boxing fans are people that are knowledgeable. Fans are people that follow boxing that know the history, that can talk about, you know, different eras of boxing, not only one era. They can talk about all different eras, different champion styles. They, they, they know technique. These are boxing fans. These are knowledgeable boxing fans. Then you get the fanatics, which are the worst kinds of fans in any sport. These are delusional, blind 
fanatics who are limited in their knowledge of the sport of boxing, who only follow one or two champions whom they believe is, who they have converted into an idol, first of all. They think this guy is a god. And it does not uh, permit them to have a normal conversation, uh, a conversation about, you know, their idol, their flaws, their idol flaws, whether he is avoiding fighting the best, you know, they'll find any type of excuse in order to justify their so-called idol. And I'm gonna tell you something. These are the worst fans in boxing because they hurt the sport, all right? They hurt the sport. They don't help the sport. You know, you can't, you got these guys posting comments and you can tell who they are when they start insulting people and, and using profanity and all these other, other kind of things. When you, when you put into question the legacy of their so-called idols, you know, the Canelos of the world, the Mayweathers of the world, and some of these other guys, you know. Um, there's better boxers if you have that conversation with them and you have conversation with a fan and not a fanatic that you can go back and forth. You might not agree, but you, you do it in a respectful manner and you, 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 put, you, you establish your points. I mean, your, your, your view and you do it in an intelligent manner. Now, these guys, they don't know how to do that. They immediately go into insults, they immediately go into hate it. So uh, the point, the reason why I'm making this, this, uh, this comment about the fanatics is that these are not the kind of people that I want in this channel. I mean, those guys, you know, I will not reply to any of those guys. I will not even uh, waste a couple of seconds to try to educate these people because they have lost all sense of critical thinking. You know, that's what happens in today's society when you become a fanatic, a fanatic of anything. And you can be a fanatic of a political figure, you know, a fanatic of Trump a fanatic of Biden, a fanatic of a fucking party. And in all honesty, none of these guys give a shit about any of us guys. All they care about, po about power, dividing and conquer. That's what they do is, is the oldest trick in the book. You know, how to keep the population controlled is by dividing and instilling hate between them. Now it's the new thing is the, you know, the immigrants. Now it's a hate on the immigrants. And it's always been this way. Every time there's an immigrant, uh, immigration uh, going into the United States from people from other parts of the world, you know, it's been the same tactic by politicians in order to control and maintain power. And do your research, guys. You know, I'm not talking out of my ass. That's the way this shit works. But well, people are so, so stupid that they fall into this narrative and um, become fanatics. And then they start hating on people with different skin color just because they heard it on fucking TV. And I tell you, because, you know, in all honesty, this is a country of immigrants. <laughs> You know, this is a country where, you know, the majority came from another part of this world. And the minority who live, who have lived here for thousands and thousands of years are considered uh, immigrants and uh, illegal aliens. And uh, some of you guys might agree, some of you might not. But like I told somebody not too long ago, I said, listen, guys, you got to, you got to have a, a heart. 
there's some of these guys that are scumbags i know you know and i and the laws of the land should be enforced but uh in all honesty like i told a lady one time that she started you know arguing with me this was in california a while back and sorry for drifting from from the boxing but i'm just giving you an example how people are so filled with hate nowadays and this is in the sport of boxing this is in politics and going to that lady she i told her you know hey put yourself in their, their shoes <laughs> if you were starving your kids starving you know they got no fucking food you know you see them struggling day by day what would you do for your family you know i come from an immigrant background man you know i fucking came from cuba back in the early 60s my family lost everything you know and we had to start from scratch and you know that beautiful island puerto rico took us in i went through a lot of shit over there trying to establish myself and trying to get respect finally became you know part of like the puerto rican culture i love it my best friends my wife my kids my grandkids are all puerto rican but anyway guys sorry for the rant i just want to tell you that there's nothing worse in this world than having no damn um critical thinking no damn empathy for people you know we will be judged one day guys we will be judged so uh again excuse me for today's rant you know i'm walking here around my neighborhood i just wanted to touch base on on that particular subject the fanatics and the fans all right that's the way the world is is divided you got to have a clear pers perspective of how things are I'm, I'm totally apolitical i don't even look at the news guys i don't even watch the news because it's all poison it's all propaganda no matter what channel you put whether it's cnn or fox they're both the same shit. you don't hear one good news of every day so you i'd rather turn that shit off focus on my fighters focus on positive stuff read the bible you know i do read it i'm a christian you know i gotta i gotta polish my language a little bit <laughs> you know i'm not perfect but i tell you you know I, I i've come to that realization that you know you gotta judge people by their character not by the color of their skin not by where they came from not where they have money or they don't have any money you know i don't care about material shit. i have never cared about material stuff i always challenge myself that's why i joined the marine corps I've always challenged myself. That's why I became a fighter, you know, and my best friends are fighters, were fighters until this day and warriors, guys that signed on the dotted line in order to give their life away for this country and the freedoms that it has. But anyway, guys, sorry for the ramble. I just want to touch base on that. Let me know what you guys think, you know, uh, Moving forward, I don't think I'm going to touch this subject again because then the fanatics are going to come out of the woodwork like rats, like like roaches. <laughs> They're going to start calling me all kinds of shit. It's going to be even worse, you know, because, you know, it's, it's tribalism. It's tribalism. People are all in little tribes nowadays instead of being one solid human race. We're all tribes, different tribes. The tribes of the whites, the tribes of the blacks, the tribes of the Latino, the tribe of the Puerto Rican, the tribe of the Dominican. The... What kind of shit is that, man? We all are the same. Come from the same tree. All right. Anyway, guys, please like, share, subscribe. Keep your prayers growing for me, for old coach. I got my team training uh, every single time. I got to thank Coach Paul, my assistant. Got to thank my wife for supporting me, you know. She is a champion also. She's a bodybuilding champion here in Florida. That woman is a warrior queen. 
Thank you all again for listening in to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. I hope to see you guys in Puerto Rico in June. Hopefully I'll be there. My health will be restored. So until then, guys, until next episode, this is Coach Mario saying hasta la vista. God bless you all and peace.